I've heard a lot of people asking questions about how um, Tesla self-driving performs in the rain. I uh, thought here's a great day to give it a shot and uh, show you how it works. So I'm just going to engage and see how we do. So typically um, you'll get a message like this one that just popped up. It says full self-driving may be degraded, poor weather detected. Um, I've seen varying degrees of success with that based on that warning. Um, sometimes it will drive perfectly and have no problems driving in bad weather. Um, in fact, I've often seen it perform better than I could um, in torrential rains. Navigated around another Tesla, no problem there. Uh, there was a tree in the road that had just fallen down, swerved around. Um, but with that said, I have had experiences where the rain was so bad um, that a warning popped up that it was unable to drive. Um, but again, that's the super extreme cases. Um, in most cases, it drives just fine in bad weather, as you can see right now. It's raining pretty hard. Um, we're on roads with no lane markings. It's navigating them. It's another question I get asked um, fairly often is, yeah, self-driving's great, but what are you gonna do when you're on a road that doesn't have lane markings? It doesn't work then. So clearly it does. Um, and I would say every update to the beta software has made this better. The only problem I have experienced related to weather with self-driving is the windshield wipers. Um, and ironically, it's not in times of bad weather. It works great in bad weather. They adjust to the speed that they need to be based on how hard it's raining. And it does that just through vision. It doesn't have a sensor. So it's utilizing the cameras, that it, the same cameras it's using for self-driving, it's using for that to detect how much rain there is and um, how fast the wiper should be going. The time that they don't work as well is actually when there um, is not rain and you're on self-driving. Um, if they start, they really don't stop. We're stopping here. This is, if you've watched my other videos, you would see that this is a turn that I have the most trouble with because of visibility on the left. And I'm gonna disengage here too because there was a car coming, but it's turning. I actually could have gone. So I'll re-engage and I'll let it go. Um, it's a really bad visibility turn. So I could see that car was coming and it was in my path. Um, however, what I couldn't see is that it had a turn signal and was turning in there. Maybe the car had seen that and was gonna go, but I don't think so. My experience is at that uh, intersection are that the car just doesn't have visibility and it makes a decision to go because it doesn't see a car. But it needs to recognize that it can't see a car. Um, that's the one spot that I would say self-driving still has a little bit of work to do. Um, and I don't know how Tesla's gonna solve for that. In my mind, it's the location of the cameras. There needs to be something probably on the front bumper where there is no camera. Um, recent pictures of the unreleased Cybertruck and a new version of Model 3 look like they may have a camera on the front bumper. Um, but I do think that's what's needed. Something with a, like a fisheye lens so that it has a wide view both directions. Um, in my experience, the software is great. It's just there is some limited visibility and I think it's due to hardware uh, where we have those problems. And I would say the only time I have problems is at turning situations like that where there isn't great visibility. However, obviously that's a major problem for self-driving cars. Um, again, as you can see, we're doing great here with rain, cars driving fine. Um, one thing I thought I'd talk about is uh, robo-taxis um, or driverless Ubers. Uh, Elon calls them robo taxis, um, but it's the next next car that Tesla's going to release is a somewhere in the neighborhood of a twenty-five thousand dollars small 
compact car and their thought is to use the same model for driverless taxis or robo taxis um, and in theory those cars are going to have no brake pedals accelerator steering wheel anything um, my one thought that I keep having and there's recently been an explanation as to how they'll solve for this is if you have a fleet of driverless cars that are functioning as taxis how, what do they do when they need to charge because if I need to charge the car I need to stop and plug in the cable into the charge port um, so if you have a fleet of cars driving autonomously they are going to need to charge and what are they going to do um, there was a recent acquisition by Tesla of a company and I'm spacing on the name and what country they were from but it was technology for um, wireless charging for cars Tesla acquired them and I don't think this is a situation of you're going to install one of these in your house although that would be great to have something installed in your garage that you just drive over top of and it charges your car um, I think the real key here is it helps solve the autonomous fleet of robo taxis uh, there's going to need to be charging stations where those cars can drive themselves to park and charge there was a runner on the side of the road there I hope you saw how the car navigated a little bit to the left around to give room while still watching for the oncoming traffic um, back to robo taxis but there needs to be those charging stations where they can autonomously pull up to a spot and charge and get back on the road to continue work as a robo taxi um, 